Hello, everyone. I'm Camille Miller. I'm the executive director of the Natural Life Business Partnership. It is April 25th of 2018, and we are learning about reflexology today from charter member Tracy McGovern. Tracy, thanks for being with us today. If you can just tell us a little bit about yourself and then give us a little bit on your reflexology 101. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Uh, sure. So I'm Tracy McGovern. Um, I've been practicing traditional foot reflexology for, it's almost 18 years, which still boggles my mind that I can do anything for 18 years. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. Um, so um, I got involved in reflexology after working a very stressful job for what wasn't an incredibly long time, but was long enough for me to realize that I couldn't work in that environment. And I wanted, um, I wanted my life to kind of be about non-stress and helping others uh, reduce their stress or experience non-stress. And, and one thing led to another, I'll keep the version short, and I ended up learning reflexology and circumstance kind of led me right into private practice. And so I've been practicing and teaching for um, quite some time now. So, um, and reflexology 101. Okay. So what, uh, let's see, what is reflexology? Where did it come from? A lot of people ask me where did it, you know, where did reflexology come from? So um, reflexology, reflexology as we know it has been uh, probably around, it's just barely, I don't even think it's quite a hundred years old. It was in the thirties that the phrase got termed um, by Eunice Ingham here in the United States. Um, that had happened after probably not even a hundred years of uh, kind of moving through scientific circles. There were um, doctors and different, well, mostly doctors looking for uh, ways to reduce pain during surgery without using anesthesia because anesthesia then was a whole lot scarier than it is now. And so through different um, trials and errors, they started to realize that certain, when certain parts of the body were affected or pressure was applied to it, it reduced pain in other areas. And through that, it kind of coursed its way through the mapping of the feet that we know today. Most people think of reflexology as that foot chart, and you know this button corresponds with that. And um, it's it's kind of true, but it's funny because when I usually talk about reflexology, the foot chart is the last thing I talk about. Um, but that's kind of where it came from. So it's exciting because being that the way it is right now <clears throat> is only about 100 years old, we have a lot of new things to learn, and a lot of things I'm sure will be tweaked and added, and it's um, pretty exciting. So. Um, but reflexology itself. So the first thing I'll say is, as with all things, you know, I think everyone's probably been to a massage therapist, maybe more than one, and you realize how different all the different styles are. So there's a lot of different mindsets. It's the same thing with reflexology. There's a lot of different philosophies and mindsets and techniques and things like that. So my particular reflexology worldview, um, I refer to it as the stress management version. Um, so my main objective, I look at reflexology as uh, really it works through the nervous system. So in our feet, we have seven, sometimes over 8,000 nerve endings, which if you ever stub your toe, you're very well aware of all the nerve endings in your feet. So um, there are lots. And so the, way, the best way I think to explain reflexology is um, it's kind of like the cliff notes of your feet. So we have all these different nerve endings um, that travel from all over our body and they kind of leave little um, summary points in your feet. And when you get a reflexology session, uh, your, feet, your feet kind of tell on you. They'll let you know different parts of the body that um, may have some kind of issue. I like to say there's parts that aren't really happy. Um, we as reflexologists, we cannot diagnose. We, we cannot diagnose. So what we can tell you is the different areas um, that things correspond to. Um, if you're feeling any kind of um, discomfort, if I hit a certain point. We can talk about what it corresponds to. Um, and the, the tricky thing is, you know, everybody, our, our nervous system, it's kind of, I like to say it's a guideline more than a rule, the foot chart. So different points that we hit, I have a really good idea of what part of your body may either be working really hard or is having, it's struggling. It's not happy, right? So it gives you a good idea of what to focus on, what to work on. Um, the nice thing about reflexology, the power in it, is as I'm working on your feet, I'm working to relax the nerves. And so when you relax the nerves, it does a couple of different things. Um, you think about our nerves, the job is to carry information through the body. And so when they're stressed or there's issues going on, um, my analogy was always the big long phone cords. Does anybody remember the big long phone cords? I'm gonna need a new analogy soon. <laughs> Some people don't know what a phone cord is. Um, but if you remember them, 
very good. I see one. Excellent. <laughs> um, so <laughs> they used to, I, you know, when I was a teenager, we had a 20 footer in our kitchen. I'd go around the corner into the closet to pretend I had privacy while I was on the phone. And after a while, the cord would get all tangled and you wouldn't be able to hear right. It would be fuzzy and you'd have to stay on the kitchen chair and let it unwind. So that's kind of what it's like. If something's going on along that nerve pathway, it gets all tangled up and the communication is fuzzy. So when you get reflex allergy, it relaxes the nerve, kind of straightens out your phone cord and allows the information to flow better. So once that happens, the body gets a better, a clearer picture of what's going on throughout. The other big, big bonus is once you relax the nervous system, it shifts your body from its stress mode, which is your sympathetic nervous system, into its relaxed mode, which is your parasympathetic nervous system. And so once you're there, that's your body's maintenance mode. And this is where the big impact of reflexology is, in my opinion. Um, once you shift your body into its uh, relaxed state, that's your body's maintenance mode, it starts to work to address the problems it is now aware of because you've cleared up this communication pathway. Our bodies are designed to self-correct. We just live in a world where we're never in the right space to do it. And so reflexology puts you in that space where your body um, starts to work with the tools that you give it, which is a whole other story, um, to fix what it can. And so it's a self, it's a self healing facilitator is what reflexology is basically. So that's the, that's the short 101 synopsis version of it. So. so is it always done through the feet? If you're touching or on someone else, are you only touching the feet part of it? There's, there's personally, I specialize in foot reflexology. I've also added um, Tibetan head and neck reflexology. There's endless, our bodies are like, <laughs> there's so many microcosms, so many little maps of the whole thing all over our body. So you can do reflexology on the hands, on the ears, on the feet. There's body reflexology. There's, um, uh, there's almost every culture has different maps and concepts of how to do this. Like before, you know, we've been calling it reflexology for a hundred years, but the idea of like touching certain parts of your body to help affect change in the whole body has been around since, you know, we've been walking on two feet, you know, it's indigenous people all over the world have different healing um, rituals and concepts and the way they work on each other's hands and feet because it just makes sense. These are the things that, you know, affect your life. So of course they're going to affect your whole body. So, um, and as I went on a different train, I don't exactly remember where I was going with that, but um, yeah, so there's different, I remember there's different maps depending on what your focus is. So no, it doesn't just have to be on the feet. I like to work on the feet because you get a lot of circulation and lymphatic benefit from the feet. Mm. So that's my personal. So if someone had say a blocked kidney or something wasn't well there, are you able to find that or define where a problem is within the body just by working in the area that you're working? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times as we're working through, uh, like if I'm working on the feet, as I'm working through the feet, I, I, my goal is to have everybody reach that deep relaxation. So I don't want you to be in pain. However, as I'm working along, um, we tend to hit points that you feel more than others. And some of them are really specific. They want to be heard. <laughs> okay. And so, um, you know, we talk about that. There's different levels of um, discomfort that you can feel at different points. And although I don't continue to exacerbate that pain, we can work through it at a different level. And that really gives you a clear, that level of pain, that level of discomfort gives you a nice idea of just like what's going on. Is it something that, you know, um, you know, maybe you ate something that you don't usually eat. It didn't really agree with you. So your stomach reflex point feels a little off. By the time I'm done the session, I can go back and check it. It's usually okay. If there's a point that's really intense and it doesn't ever really calm down, that's usually something, you know, you start to talk about what it corresponds to, um, what that can be connected to. Because sometimes um, a symptom someone feels isn't really the problem. It's the, a symptom. And so mm -hmm. reflex algae will point more to like, the thing that's having the actual problem. And so I refer people out, you know, if something's extreme or something, um, you know, really is very impacted, I'll refer them to go get testing done and things like that. It's like okay. I said, we can't, there's too many layers for us to diagnose. Any one point could be corresponding to three different, three, four different points. And then there's also the fact that it's the foot, you know, so that's endless. So I would send people for, um, to get things checked out if something was really extreme. Did that answer your question? Yeah. So um, is reflexology considered energy medicine or more like massage therapy? Well, I mean, it definitely has an energetic component to it. But there's... All things do. You asked me. <laughs> you are. 
um, any, almost any body work you do has an energetic component to it because, you know, right. we're interacting with each other and that's just how it is. Um, I tend to explain it in the more physical aspect. Okay. But there's definitely, especially with that deep relaxation, there's that whole energetic component to it. So. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have a question that someone just chatted in. It says, is the pain in the foot as opposed to where in the body it is having the problem? Yeah. Usually as I'm working along, I hit a spot and a lot of times I'll feel something at the same time someone goes, what is that? I hear this a lot. What is that? That's the whole conversation <laughs> during a session. And we talk about what it corresponds to. Some people um, will live and they'll say, oh, I feel like this tingling in my shoulder and I'm working on their shoulder reflex. And so a lot of times that's people who just tend to, they're, they're doing body work themselves or they're just energy workers or get a lot of energy. They're mm -hmm. more connected to their body. Okay. Um, they'll be able to sense it, the different points where I'm working. Um, but more frequently than not, you know, we, we both myself and um, the client will feel something in their foot and we talk about what it corresponds to. And do your clients come back over and over? The way I explain it is, um, yeah, well, if you're working on something specific, you know, uh, my example is uh, like, I've had a couple people who just find out they're diagnosed with diabetes. They don't want to take meds. So while they're shifting their diet, they come frequently. So they'll come twice a week for two or three weeks. And then we start to taper it down just to kind of help their body work towards balance while they're doing the shift in their nutritional okay. pattern, and things like that. Um, a lot of people come just as a stress management. So they'll come weekly or biweekly just as a stress management tool. Um, but maintenance, you know, once you're happy with your health and you have a stress management plan in place, come once a month, you know, just for a tweak. But you don't, you don't have to come frequently. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to enlist it to help your body do. Okay. Um, Rakesh, you have a question for Tracy? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, there's a research team, uh, Tracy, that's working on uh, overactive bladder. That's mm -hmm. the problem where men have to go to bathroom several times during the night. Yeah. So I understand the problem is bladder is not really full. It's the message going to the brain is wrong. Yeah. So what they're doing is putting electrodes on the feet yeah. and uh, affecting the nerve and solve the problem that way. Is that awesome. part of reflexology? That's interesting. I'd love to send me a link to that. I want to read about that. So uh, it could be, it could be, yeah, because they're affecting the nerve pathway. So that could be, although that's probably more of a direct route. Um, they're, they're probably tracing specific nerve more than reflex point. I'm curious where they're putting the electrodes because I'm curious to would be where I would think. That's correct. There is a specific point, uh, yeah. If the electrodes are not placed specifically correctly, right. it won't work. Uh, oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. 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 I'd be glad to uh, give you details on that. Yeah. Send me that link. That's excellent. Thanks. Yeah. So what type of uh, schooling do you need to be a reflexologist? Well, it depends on where you live. Um, there's every state has different rules and regulations. There are states where you have to be a massage therapist to be a reflexologist. Oh. Um, there are okay. states. Where, yes. There are. We try not to have that happen, but sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, there's currently no licensure, which has its pluses and its minuses. Um, okay. The minus is you can watch a YouTube video and tell people you're a reflexologist. Um, so, you know, that's a negative. So um, what I adhere to, and um, I also teach reflexology, and so what I built my program around was the concept of 300-hour program. So... Um, that that's the standard from the reflexology association of America. Um, and then generally what usually happens when states go to licensure is they require you to pass the, um, testing through the American reflexology certification board. So, um, those are kind of the two bodies that kind of monitor, you know, the professional. So is, is it like a certification if people wanted to find a reflexologist, what do they look for? So it depends on, um, well, it depends on how picky you are, I suppose. If you can find, there's people that have been practicing reflexology for a very, very long time. And I would never, um, I, you know, I would never talk down about them. Um, if you're going online, ARCB is the American Reflexology Certification Board. You can go there and look for a nationally certified reflexologist. Um, uh, different programs, like, in, like my program is a certification program. So once, okay. and then they take the national test. 
So, you, you know, you can check their certifications, make sure it's a real school that they went to, um, you know, and you can see if they're nationally certified. So that, that would be the, the easiest route to go. And nationally certified means that test. Means there is a test, that. just, oh, yeah. that's good to know right there. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, we have another question. Uh, it says, do the reflex points correspond to acupuncture points? Ah, not usually. There's a couple that they do match up. Um, and it's not necessarily, uh, like my example is the K1 um, point is a uh, meridian point um, that has special significance. Um, and for us, for reflexologists, it's the solar plexus point, which has a lot to do with um, relaxation and lots of energetic uh, you know, when you're thinking about your solar plexus, as far as energy goes, that's kind of your personal power. And solar plexus is itself is a, a juncture of nerves kind of um, under your diaphragm. <clears throat> and so it's a very relaxing point. And um, I, I, I can't speak super intelligently to um, a lot of acupuncture points, but K1 is like a major beginning point for I want to say all of the meridians, but don't quote me on that. So, but most of the time, no, um, not necessarily. So it's kind of, um, it's an interesting comparison to the flow of meridians and kind of the flow of our, um, our nervous system. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, for doing our member spotlight for us and telling us a little bit about reflexology. Do you want to give your place a plug? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Of course I do. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, my personal business is Essential Connections Reflexology and Reiki. And so uh, that's how I practice. And my, my reflexology pr practitioners program, it's a mouthful right the second, is part of that. So, and that all takes place at Complete Wellness Quakertown, which is in Quakertown, Pennsylvania, where um, we've kind of created a space where someone can come and experience lots of different modalities to kind of build their own, um, you know, whatever their healing plan is. We're all kind of here for that. So yeah, definitely come say hi. We have going on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for participating in our member spotlight. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We're going to turn it off now. Thank you. Mm -hmm.